But welcome to uh, our carol service then at Rashford Care Home um, this year. It's lovely to be with you. In case you're not quite sure who we are, uh, I am the pastor of Ridgeway, of Ridgeway Community Church in Redditch, and we come, some of our folks, every six weeks, and we conduct a service here at Rashford Care Home, and we do a carol service, and you're here for that, and that's absolutely lovely to have you here. And I, and I hope that this means that, that you'll be here in 2019 for the carol service, and 2020, and 2021. You just keep, keep coming. That'll be, that'll, that'll be absolutely lovely. Um, I'm going to call on uh, Mr. Brian Cox. He's one of our, our members, and he's just going to open our service in, with a short word of prayer. Thank you, Brian. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this season, for the many wonderful things that uh, bring joy to our hearts. But above all, Lord, we thank you for your coming into this world uh, to live a life like us, to experience and share the kind of lives that we live. But above all, at the end of that life, to die at Calvary, to bear our sin. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us. And as we bring our songs uh, in a few minutes, pray that we might sense again the joy of this season and its true meaning for your name's sake. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing Silent Night, so if you've got the sheet there, Silent Night it is, we're going to sing. Just wait for the music, I'm responsible for that. Just to hear the music, wasn't it? It's just that we, we download the music and uh, 
So sometimes, the, as you can hear, there's an extra verse there. I don't know if it's like it on the others. We shall see. But no matter. Thank you, Joy. I'm reading from the Message Bible, and it's the birth of Jesus. About that time, Caesar Augustus, Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. Rodney, my, my friend. Oh my God. <laughs> and this is Dylan. Yes, thank you, Rodney. Now, um, say hello to everyone. No. What, what do you mean, no? Why does it take too long? There's too many people. Uh, Rodney, Rodney, I don't mean that. I don't mean go round and say hello to everybody individually. Just say hello, everyone, just like I did. Okay. Hello, everyone. Just like I did. <laughs> ha, 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 you are funny. Well, I guess you're looking forward to Christmas, and I'm sure that the boys and girls and the mums and dads and everybody else are looking forward to Christmas, are you? Yes! And what about you, Rodney? Well, um, let me think. Uh, well, there must be some nice things, Rodney, about Christmas that you would like. I mean, what about presents? Oh, yes. Presents. Not too good. But what do you mean, not too good? Well, do you remember what you taught me last year? Um, uh, Rodney, let me think, hang on. That uh, year's a long time ago. Um, no, I can't remember. It came from Townland. You didn't stand very much, did you? Um, well, no, all right, Rodney, but I mean, it's the thought that counts, isn't it? I mean, you did have some nice presents. I mean, what, what did Uncle Duncan buy you? Oh, yes. Uncle Duncan. Well, he bought me something useless. Useless? And what he, did he buy you? A pair of gloves. No hands. I'm a bird. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, Do you know what I call him? What, Uncle Duncan? Yes. Well, what? I hope it's polite. Oh, yes. Unk dunk. Oh. <laughs> right -o. All right, but what did you have from Auntie Rose then last year? Surely something nice from Auntie Rose. Oh, yes. A skitting room. <laughs> I suppose that was no help to you. You've only got wings, haven't you? I know. Never mind. And I suppose you've got a nickname for Auntie Rose as well, haven't you? Yes. And what is it then? Tell everyone. Aunt Plant. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes. Get it? Yes, I get it, Rodney. Auntie Rose, Aunt Plant. And what about Uncle Tom and Aunt Matilda? What do they get you? Because sometimes they buy quite interesting presents, don't they? Yes. They bought me an ERT-360. <laughs> a what? An ERT-360? What on earth is that? It is a 360-degree electric rotating tooth rush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rodney, you did have a bad time, didn't you, for Christmas? Gloves, a skipping rope and a toothbrush, and they're not really any good to you at all, are they? No. Well, let me tell you something, Rodney. I happen to know 
the Unc Dunk, I mean Uncle Duncan, and Aunt Plot, I mean Aunt Rose, and uh, Uncle Tom and Aunt Matilda are clubbing together, joining together to buy you a very special Christmas present this year. Oh, what is it? Um, well, you normally keep a surprise, Rodney. You don't tell beforehand what it is. Um, shall I tell Rodney, boys and girls? Yeah. Rodney, they don't look too sure, do they? Shall I ask them again? Would you like me to tell Rodney what he's going to have for Christmas? Yes! Oh, well, I think that settles it then, so I will then. Hold on just a moment, won't you, boys and girls? Oh, that's nice! But you know, Rodney, even though they don't know what it is that <coughs> Uncle Tom and Aunt Matilda and Uncle Duncan and Auntie Rose have bought you for Christmas, I do want to tell the boys and girls something about the best gift ever that was ever given to anyone in the whole wide world and to lots of people. What's that? It is the gift of God's Son, as the Bible puts it. And we're going to hear a little bit about that a bit later on. But for now we're going to say goodbye to the boys and girls and a Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. And while Bill helps to... Take Rodney home. Could we have the children from Witchboard to come and sing to us now, please? How are you going to do it? We'll start there in the choir place. So children will do. I saw three ships come sailing in first. Can you say, can you start to them up to so you don't knock them? Remember how you stand?
Lovely, thank you so much, uh, boys and girls from Witchbold Primary, for coming and, and singing to us. That was absolutely lovely. Well, we're going to join together in song now while shepherds watch their flocks by night. To read you, it's it's slightly amusing, and I'm I'm sure that the younger ones will appreciate it as well as the older ones. <coughs> Christmas is just round the corner. For most people, that's a good thing. But I'm here to speak for the others who dread what festivities bring. We hate the weeks leading up to it. It fills us with nothing but dread. It's true. For the whole festive season, I just want to hide in my bed. I hate Brussels sprouts with a vengeance. 
the sound of the crackers too much. I hate to be wished Merry Christmas. I hate tinsel and holly and such. Sometime at the start of December, the country begins to go mad. When everyone's spirits start soaring, my mood starts to get pretty bad. Forgive me if just before Christmas I can't bring myself to be perky. I'd just like to get through to New Year, but it's unlikely because I'm a turkey. <laughs> So we're going to sing again. Hark the herald angels sing. <coughs> Just give us a minute. We'll put the sheets round. That's fine. <coughs> These are lovely carols. And uh, I would encourage you, even though it's Hark the herald angels sing. Is that the right one? one here or two? No, it's just one more. I would encourage you to think about the words you're singing. I, I don't know about you, but Christmas carols are so familiar, you could almost sing them in your sleep. But actually, the words of those carols speak and bring a, a lovely message out in those words. So do think about them as we sing this lovely uh, carol together. Let's wait until maybe everybody's got one, then we start the music. Girls are on our line if we have Yeah. Okay. Here we go, then. Gospel chapter 8 through to verse 20. Thank you, Julie. So this is the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. 
Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you. We're going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. What about the words do you have? Thank you. Let's wait for the sheets to be distributed. Where's Emma? And I understand that the boys and girls of Witchbowl Primary School know O Little Town of Bethlehem really well. Lovely, so you're going to sing up really well for us. That's great, thank you. Do you have a school Christmas party? Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Can Rodney come? <laughs> He'd like to come, wouldn't he, I'm sure. special guest for Christmas party. You don't sound too sure, boys and girls. Maybe, maybe. Well, at least you're being honest, but that's a good thing, isn't it? He can only come if he's being good. If he's being good, then I'll pass on your message. What's your name? Okay, I'll pass on that message to him. Thank you very much. Okay, let's set the music rolling. A little town of Let's sing up, boys and girls.
Well, we made it. <laughs> and now my wife Joy is going to come and sing to us. Thank you. <clears throat> A drafty stable with an open door Mary cradling the babe she bore The Prince of Glory when he came Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem To see the Lord appear to men Just as poor as was the stable then the Prince of Glory when he came. Star of silver sweep across the skies, show where Jesus in a manger lies. Shepherd, swiftly from your stupor rise to see the Saviour of the world. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to men just as poor as was the stable then the prince of glory when he came angels sing again the song you sang sing the glory of god's gracious plan sing that bethlehem's little baby can be salvation to the soul. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to men just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Mine are riches from your poverty, from your innocence eternity mine forgiveness by your death for me child of sorrow for my joy oh now carry me to bethlehem to see the lord appear to men just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. I don't know how good you are at Christmas shopping. Um, I better turn that down a bit. Or if you've done all your Christmas shopping, maybe. I don't know, but uh, I don't know how many shopping days there are to Christmas, but it's only a fortnight tomorrow, isn't it? So does that leave you about 13 shopping days to Christmas and the last minute rush on Christmas Eve? And uh, there are papers and magazines and all sorts of things, aren't there? They're full of all ideas for things you might like to buy your friends or your, your family or your, or your teachers. <laughs> You know, I, I actually typed into the internet. You, you know what that is, don't you? You use that, don't you? Yes. And uh, I typed in, what do I buy as a Christmas present? And for some strange reason, on the, on the top of the, the list, the article that came up was, was from Chainsaw Monthly. <laughs> and then it had all these gadgets and things that you could, you could buy. But there was something for everyone, I guess, out there if you look. But it's not so easy, is it? I overheard a conversation only this morning and uh, a gentleman was talking to a lady who was, who was serving him over a counter and uh, she was saying, well, you know, my mum has said to me this year, just get me a token gift. You know, I suppose mother was thinking it's so difficult because I don't know what I want and daughter doesn't know what to buy mother and, and so just a token present or something. And then the gentleman said, you know, he said, I've been, been married for just over 50 years and every Christmas I get it wrong. <laughs> is that a man thing? He says it's either the wrong shape, the wrong colour, or the wrong size. And she doesn't use perfume and doesn't want jewellery. But my wife's brilliant. She's here. She's, she's my Christmas shopping. 
And, and Rodney, my friend, my emu, well, he's got some high hopes, hasn't he, for, for Christmas from his uncles and aunties and things after the disappointments last year. But when you're, when you're doing this Christmas shopping thing, what is it that you, how does it work for you? Well, the first thing I think you probably want to know is, in your mind, is how you feel about the person you're buying it for. Eh? Yeah, because let's face it, there are some people, aren't there, that you, they wouldn't be on your list? No? You wouldn't? No? You wouldn't want to buy them a Christmas present, would you? And, and I guess it's probably true for all of us that there are some that we've actually, dare I say it, fallen out with and we've crossed them off the Christmas list. Happens, doesn't it? And there are those that we think, well, I might buy them a present, but um, they're not that much of a friend. I don't like them that much. And um, you're not listening, are you, Rodney? And then you go into Poundland and you buy one of those Poundland things for 99p. So you do think about the relationship that you have with people. And then, then you ask yourself, don't you, something else. Not, what's my relationship with them like? But you also think, well, what do they need? You know, what would they like? I mean, when I was your age, I think my expectations were a little bit unrealistic. What I thought my mum and dad might buy me, but still I had some nice presents and I'm grateful uh, for those. What's suitable for them? You're thinking about that. Do they want a toy? Do they want a book? Do they want an electronic gadget? Do they want uh, an experience day of driving a fast car or even an aeroplane flying lesson? What, what would suit them? And sometimes we scratch our heads because some folks are a bit difficult to buy for, aren't they? And, uh, but don't buy Rodney a skipping rope, will you? Or, or, or gloves, or an ERT360, will you, boys and girls? Because it'd be no good for him, would it? So you're thinking about your relationship with the person, and then you're, you're thinking about something suitable that they might need, or certainly desire when you're doing your Christmas co- shopping. But when, you, when you've worked it out, oh, I love them so much. Oh. And then you think, I know what they'd like. Ah, oh, yeah, I could get them that. That very thing. And then you look it up, and you see the price ticket. And your heart sinks. Um, I'm, I'm not going to... I don't love them that much. I'm not going to pay, pay that much for it. It's far, far too costly. It could even be that you couldn't afford it, even though you love them so much. Now, as you come to Christmas, and I've talked to you about... Christmas shopping and buying gifts and thinking about the relationship that you have with the person you're buying for and what they might need or what they might like to receive from you and the price that you might have to pay for it. I I think you'll all know, however old you are today, however young you are, you know that in the Bible there it speaks about Jesus, God's son, as being God's gift to men and women, young people, boys and girls like us, this very Jesus whom the Bible says came into the world to save sinners. Now then, if you apply those kind of ideas to God giving his son to us that we might have our sins forgiven, and you think about the relationship that we have with God, well, if we're really honest, for most of us, if not all, there's been a time, and maybe even now, that we've simply ignored God. We've denied that he even exists. And certainly we haven't thought much of or about Jesus. Do you realise that when you sing away in a manger, or when you sing those songs about the baby in the manger, that this is God the Son become flesh, but you can't actually separate the manger from the journey that Jesus took as he grew up into infancy and through childhood and through puberty and to manhood, that journey to the cross at Calvary where he died. He was innocent, done nothing wrong. In fact, it pleased God in every way. But you know, we haven't, have we? You heard that phrase, to be on the wrong side of the law? You heard that, you know, when you've you've done something wrong? You've broken the law? Now, I I, I love little children, it's great. Um, We have a son who's a police officer. When he was in the traffic department one day, he was driving through Kidderminster. There's a huge intersection. Loads of cars, very busy, traffic light controlled. And uh, just as he looked, one car in front went through the light. It was red. It got against the red light, crossed the line. And much to the delight of all the other road users who were lining up and stopping, he put his blue lights on and his sirens on and he went across the lights and stopped this car. And the driver wound the window down and 
And our son said to him, he said, excuse me, sir, he said, do you know why I have stopped you? No. Don't you? Well, um, you went through a red traffic light. He said, uh, no, I didn't. It was orange. It was amber. And then a little voice of a seven-year-old on the back seat said, no, it wasn't, Daddy, it was red. <laughs> and I think his face went as red as the traffic light was red. But it's true, isn't it? Sometimes we like to think, I didn't go through a red light. I didn't cross the line. But many times, really, we've gone through God's red lights. You know, those things that we do sometimes or don't do, whether it's theft, neglect of someone that we shouldn't neglect in the family, or a friendship, deceit, lies, greed, immorality, a whole host of things we could list that tell us that we've gone through the red light. But you know, Jesus never went through God's red lights. They're always on green. And then the Bible tells us that that one who was absolutely righteous and perfect went to the cross, so from the manger to the cross, and there he hung, the Bible tells us, in order to take the punishment for the red light crossings that we had done. It was truly that he took hell upon his shoulders. Now then, we said, didn't we, we want to know about the relationship between the buyer and the receiver of the gift, and whether they need it. We need Jesus. Boys and girls need Jesus. Men and women need Jesus. At Christmas, we celebrate his coming. And we said, didn't we, what about the price? Even though we ignored God, God set his love upon so many people like us. He was willing to give up his son, and his son was willing to come and die on the cross at Calvary to bring us life and forgiveness. What a cost. What a cost that was to lay down your life. That's a price to pay, isn't it? But the Father, God the Father didn't say, no, I'm not doing it. And God the Son didn't say, no, I'm not coming. He came. He was willing. What a gift. Imagine. Just imagine. If you set your heart on someone and you saw what they really need and you think, you know what, I'm going to give my all, I'm going to sell everything I've got, I'm going to give everything just to buy that person that wonderful gift that they really do need. And imagine then on Christmas Day, on the lead up to Christmas, you took them that gift and you put it in front of them and you said, here you are, I think so much of you, here's this present, I've spent the world on it just for you. And they did this. <laughs> Not interested. I walked away. How would you feel? Terrible, I think. Very disappointing. But you know, sometimes we're like that with God's gift of salvation, God's gift of forgiveness, God's gift of eternal life through His Son Jesus. We're just like that. We say, not so many words. Not for me. It's not for me. Don't want it. <coughs> Don't need it. Let me tell you, God would have never done it if it wasn't necessary. And I wonder, this Christmas time, when you think about presents and gifts, will you think about God's greatest gift, the best gift ever, but not just think about it and what it means, but receive it for your own self. We're going to sing O Come All Ye Faithful to conclude. We'll give out the sheets now. And um, you've met Rodney, and I'm really pleased that you've met Rodney, and maybe you might meet Rodney again. There are some boys and girls down in Inkbara First School. They see Rodney two or three times a term. They seem to love it, and he loves going. But we've got another visitor when we sung this carol, and just have a quick short prayer to end. And this other visitor, he's got hats like some of you are wearing, or a hat like some of you are wearing. Can you guess who it might be? Pardon? Santa! Sorry, I must be going deaf. Did you answer me? Santa! Oh, that's better. Good, yes. Santa Claus. So we'll sing the carol, we'll pray, and then he's going to come and say hello. Half the Herald Angels, sorry. Oh, come all you faithful. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's just pray for a moment. Heavenly Father, will you help us to think deeply about Jesus Christ having come into the world. Grant, Lord, that all of these boys and girls and older ones here this Christmas time might know a joy in their hearts and a peace. We especially pray for those, Lord, who will be missing someone deeply. Father, will you comfort them this Christmas time? In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. So is Santa Claus around? Is he, is he nearby? <laughs>